She was the Mother Teresa of her day and will likely be New Zealand's first saint. She was one small, devoted and very determined French nun. Suzanne Aubert, more commonly known as Sister Mary Joseph or Mother Aubert. Normally associated with Hiroharama or Jerusalem and with the Island Bay Home of Compassion, both of which she established. She also spent 12 years in Hawke's Bay. Suzanne had arrived in Hawke's Bay in February of 1871, worn out and unwell from Auckland, and took up residence at the Catholic Mission with the Maoist priests at Miani. Since arriving in Auckland in 1860, Suzanne had taught amongst Māori and had learned equally as much in return. Her mentor had been Peata Hoki, a relative of the powerful Ngāpuhi chief Dewa, who taught her everything about Te Ao Māori, including Rongoa, or Māori medicine. It was this that Suzanne would spend her years in Hawke's Bay perfecting and which would establish her reputation amongst Māori and Pākehā alike. Suzanne had received a French education in medicine and would later combine her knowledge of chemistry, biology and nursing with Rongoa to create remedies which she freely distributed. She was known to travel 20 or 30 miles a day off Nongfot and was often accompanied by her white dog Prince. So this little nun with her fully bonnet and her little dog were a frequent sight around both Miani and Taradale. And Prince seemed to have a bit of a nose for illness. He would often park himself outside a residence where someone was sick and refused to budge until his mistress had been in to see the patient. She was also said to have dispensed her medicines from the little red shed at the Miani mission and the lawn outside was often crowded with people eager to get Medi's help in the medicines. The local doctors respected her and there were people who claimed that she had cured them when the local doctors had given up. It was her medicines that initially made her famous, though sadly, it seems, the secrets of their effectiveness died with her. Although others helped with the production, no one was ever allowed to follow the entire process from start to finish, and certain aspects were always performed by Suzanne. Eventually the production proved too time consuming, and Suzanne was also displeased when one manufacturing company started watering down the contents, leading to complaints from customers. Māori were very dear to Suzanne's heart. They suffered terribly from introduced illnesses. She not only healed them as best she could, she also taught their children, baptising about 200 of them, it is said, and shared her faith with them. She was very proud of the establishment of a church and mission at Pakipaki Paki in 1879, where she also lived for some years, and she personally furnished the church herself. Suzanne maintained that a Māori village was the cradle of her mission and that they had the first claim on her love and care. In 1883, Suzanne left Hawke's Bay to establish her mission at Hirohalama or Jerusalem. She would later describe her years in Hawke's Bay as the happiest of her life. She would return only once in 1909 to nurse her friend Irene Karodia Donnelly when she was dying. But that's another story. Thank you for watching our story from the Library Vaults today. To learn more about Hawke's Bay history, come into Napier Libraries or visit our website at www.napierlibrary.co.nz. Stay tuned for our next dive into the Library Vaults.